Well, a very warm welcome once again to the iPhone How To video series. We're focusing on Rev Mobile, which is a new development platform allowing you to develop your apps and deploy them on a number of mobile platforms from a company called RunRev. My name is Ben Beaumont and I'm uh, the product manager at the company. And uh, today we're going to be focusing on the Shake feature. We'll look at the basics and then we'll go on to build this application um, uh, which tests your reaction times using the Shake feature. Okay, so let's take a look at the basic messages that have been added to allow us to interact with the um, shake motion on the iPhone. And what I've done is I've dragged out a graphic, a circle, and I've made it dark blue. Um, you can see that I've just changed a few properties, like made it opaque and changed its color. But really, it's just a, a graphic that I've dragged on. Now, if you want to load up the card script with me, you'll notice that I've added a couple of um, handlers already. Now here we've got a, a motion start message and we have a motion end message that we're handling. So anytime somebody shakes their iPhone, your stack, uh, your application is going to receive motion start and motion end messages. So when I or you start to shake our iPhone, we get a motion start message with the parameter shake. When we stop shaking, we get a motion end message with the parameter shake. So we can tell when the shake started and when the shake stopped. So what I'm going to do in this particular case is I'm going to simply hide our big graphic when I receive a shake message. So if P motion is shake, then hide graphic 1. So let's go ahead and test that in our simulator. So if I go to plugins, mobile plugin, and I'll create a new project with Shake. So you can simulate a um, Shake message by going up to the hardware menu and sending a Shake gesture. And if we do that, you'll see that our um, graphic has disappeared. Okay, so let's try and do a little bit more now with the Shake feature. And the application that I've made on your right um, shows a white disk for a random period of time and asks the user to start shaking as soon as they see this white disk and stop shaking as soon as it goes away. And what we're looking to do is test how quickly they reacted to the uh, white disk appearing and how quickly they reacted to it disappearing and therefore getting an average reaction time. Now I had a quick look on um, Wikipedia and I found out that it takes 0.19 seconds for the average 20 something to react to visual stimulus and therefore obviously there's um, a little bit of leeway meaning that anybody who can get an average of under 0.3 seconds is doing really really well. So I thought it'd be quite an interesting app to try out in the office just to see um, you know what people's reaction times were like. So here's the app that uh, that we're going to make together. Now we'll start by just building the interface and so I'm going to go to File, Import Images, Control and I designed this interface a little bit earlier. There's just four um, items to it. There's a background image and I'm just going to lock its position. There's a start button, a stop button and a game icon which we don't need because that's what we'll use when deploying to the phone. Now I'm going to give these a nice memorable ID because I'm going to use them as the icon of a button as opposed to using them as images directly and so also I'll just hide them so that nobody can see them. So we start by creating our start button and I'll get rid of those properties 3D shadow border, highlight border it just simply means that when somebody presses, clicks on the button, they don't have any borders or anything else showing. And then I'll give it an icon so that it's got a nice play icon. And finally, the last thing to do is to just set the button to transparent. Now, to make it fit nicely, as we did in the first video, just use the fit content feature. So there we go. We have our nice um, start button. Next thing we need to do is drag out a couple of fields. First one, we'll just make the full width. 
start by making the text color a kind of um, lightish gray. I'll just go to white and then take its color down a little bit. Text formatting, we'll make it left justified. And finally in its contents, we'll just put your average um, reaction time. And we'll take this and we'll just copy and paste it and we'll put it below and we'll go to the property inspector and this time we'll just change it to that message under 0 0.3 seconds is good text formatting right justify it okay so that's our basic messages in place just to help the user know what's going on just line them up nicely finally we need to put in our timer and we'll just make this nice and big again we'll go and make it um, white we'll give this one a name this time and how about reaction time text formatting we'll make it bold and how big is 24 24 is good so let's make it 24 and let's just put some dummy content in it at the moment so we'll put 0, 0.0 just so that we can align it up nicely Okay, it's pretty good. It's not quite as big as our other one, so I'm going to make it a little bit bigger. Let's try 30. Yeah, there we go. Actually, it's good in bold. I didn't do that last time, so that's even better. Okay, so now we've got the, the basics. The last thing we need to do is create the white disk. So I'm just going to take a circle. I'm going to drag it out. Let's try and make it roughly line up. doesn't need to be perfect. And I will set up its properties, so we'll make it line size of 0, opaque, and it's already white, so that's fine by me. Just adjust it. And finally, let's just give this a name of circle. Okay, now to adding the scripts. So if you load up your card script, um, you'll notice on mine I've got the shell of my application. So let's, t let's walk through it together. We'll get an open card message as soon as our application is opened. And what we want to do is reset the game to its game state. So we'll call this test reset there and call the reset function. Now the reset should return the game to its original state. So what do we want to happen? Firstly, we want to um, make sure the disk isn't showing. So we'll hide that. Hide graphic circle. Second thing we want to make sure is that the icon is correct on this button. This icon is going to switch between stop and play. And obviously at the beginning we always want it to look like um, you can press play. So set the icon of button. Now did we give that a name? We didn't, so we'll call that start. Of button start to 6,000, which we know is our play. Okay, the next thing we want to do is down here, we want to make sure that we've got 0, 0. So put 0, 0, 0.0 into field. And I think we called that reaction time. Okay? And that's pretty much us ready and reset. Now, during the actual game itself, we're going to track four values. We're going to track when we um, displayed the disk, so when the test started, when we ended the test, when we hid the disk, and the two reactions, the when the shake started and when the shake stopped. So we also want to make sure they're all blank. So put 0 into S test start. Put 0 into S test end. Put 0 into S shake start and finally put zero into s shake end <laughs>